Hello, I'm John from Offroad CC and welcome to my rather messy lounge. Uh, why are we here? Is it to, to tell you about my favourite Japanese takeaway? No, no it isn't. Is it about hot sauce? Absolutely not. No, instead I'm unboxing this box. Front, as you can see, the SRAM. It's quite an exciting one this one because inside there, I already know, is SRAM's uh, latest greatest and also probably more to the point for most people, also their most affordable 12 speed group set for mountain bikes so far. So without further ado, get the knife and let's have a dig into it. So, um, if you aren't kind of slightly au fait with uh, SRAM's 12 speed mountain bike kit, last year they launched something called XX1 and X01 Eagle. The Eagle bit signifying the fact that it now had 12 speeds rather than the 11 of the uh, older group sets. Um, GX Eagle. Da -da -da. So I'd like to pop as well. Um, it's very much like that, except it's significantly more affordable. Um, it's all those drivetrains, they're single run drivetrains. So you get one ring at the front, one trigger shifter. I personally really like that, it's very simple and easy to get your head around, frees up that fun for, you know, a drop a post. I think it's overall a good thing, which is why I'm so excited about this. Because some background, um, the full retail price in the UK for an XX1 uh, Eagle group set is, according to my notes, 1,260 quid. Um, X01, which is uh, a little bit heavier, marginally heavier, it has less carbon fibre, less trick things like that. That comes, still comes in at £1,075. GX Eagle, on the other hand, uh, will set you back at full UK retail, you'll probably get deals on it out there if you look hard, 425 quid for the complete group set, which is which is pretty good going, sort of less than half the price of the cheapest previous one. This is why GX, I think, is probably going to be the one for the masses. But enough of me waffling on, you probably want to know what's in the box. Uh, so do I. So, let's see if I can get in there. Quite a nice box, isn't it? Range to realise. Little eagle logo on top, and like it's hot sauce. Um, look, that's what it looks like, you can tell it from there. Um, so, first things first, and this might seem like an odd place to start, and it is mostly because it's on the top, would be with the chain. As you might know from previous group sets, one of the difficulties in banging more speeds onto the back of your cassette is that you only have the same amount of space to work with which means that your chain has to get thinner. And if your chain is thinner, then it's going to inevitably be weaker. Well, that's how it's always seemed to be. But what SRAM managed to do with their 12-speed chains is they've kept the internal down to the same, and so you've got the same pitch rolling over those teeth. But what they've done is they've made the outside of it extremely flush, so the rivets that hold the chain together, they, uh, they don't protrude outside, so it's a very flat chain. Um, SRAM also say that that gives a lot of benefits in terms of the lifespan of the chain. Uh, it's also a lot quieter, something I've noticed with the XX1 Eagle drivetrain and the X01 Eagle drivetrain. All, all shiny stuff that I've been testing. I've been riding it quite a lot for, well, basically since it's been launched. So I'm pretty, pretty familiar with it. I'm, so far, I'm a very big fan. But anyway, getting back onto GX. So, this chain has a lot of similar things. It uses the same number of stamping processes. Uh, every time you stamp these little chain links out of a flat sheet, they do more and more work to them. And the XX1 and X01 Eagle chain, that actually took like a whole load more steps. I think it's in the region of 50 steps to do it. That's a lot more than they used to do for their 11 speed chain. And that's because they want all these outlines and all these profiles much smoother and flatter. Uh, which again sort of increases the life, allows them to squeeze those 12 speeds in without making the cassette too much wider. It is a little bit wider than a uh, than 11 speed cassette, but it also means that you're not going to get the cassette kind of touching the spokes, so that's good. Um, anyway, that's enough chain chat done for now. The real area uh, where obviously GX Eagle is going to be kind of saved some costs, cut some corners, also increase some weight is going to be in the crank set. Um, X01 and XX1 Eagle have a carbon fibre crank arm, um, again married to hollow axle, uh, direct mount ring, uh, that's the same there, uh, but 
XO1 Eagle, uh, it's made for like being a bit of rough and tumble, it's sort of like your enduro or trail drivetrain. So that has a foam core inside the carbon arm just to stiffen it up. XX1 Eagle does without that because it's supposed to be for the cross country race, so that means that, uh, I better check my notes, of course I don't need it off my heart. Basically, X, uh, XO1 Eagle cranks, um, they weigh about 520 grams uh, for the 170 mil ones. This is made out of hot forged, I think it's actually warm forged, is what, uh, that's what I like to call it, aluminium. So, of course, it's probably going to be a little bit more weighty. How much more weighty? I'll put it on the scales and find out in a moment. But before that happens, I better dig into this box and find the other arm. They've really done the thing with the packaging, haven't they? Um, there we go. Come on, get that out there. Yeah. So, again, you can see on this, it's basically stamped, forged, aluminium. Uh, it's not hollow arm, uh, as on some of SRAM's mid-range 11-speed drive trains, you do get a hollow um, alloy arm. Uh, for Eagle, or sorry, for GX Eagle that you just get aftermarket, this is the only crank arm you can get. If you buy it, or if you buy a bike that comes with it, they do actually do a, uh, a hollow aluminium crank arm, but again, you might notice that on bikes out in there. Anyway, enough chat, time of the weighing. So, put this arm on there. Boom. Ooh. Nice, that fell on top. And we've got a total weight of 625 grams versus the 520 grams of XO1 Eagle. So, yeah, what's that? 110 odd grams? Oh no, sorry, 100. Oh my god, 105 grams. Maths, not a strong point. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's a fair bit of weight. It'd be interesting to see when we're riding it how the, or how the stiffness varies. Um, yeah, sometimes it's noticeable the cranks a bit more than you'd think, but that'd be a very interesting thing to try with this. I should point out that this has got a uh, 32 tooth ring on it, if you're interested in that sort of thing, and uh, it is also possible um, to use a boost chain ring with it as well. Um, so it's the, basically the same drive train as Harley, but if you've got a normal rear wheel or 142x12, you know, 135 quick release, use that chain ring uh, if you've got a boost one then use one with a slightly different offset you can't see it but yeah it just moves out anyway moving rapidly onwards um, this is probably like the heart of the whole thing yeah it is the rear derailleur of course you only get one that's the joy of uh... oh god that's quite stiff ah. um, yeah that's the joy of single speed or single rings um, is that uh, you only need to shift with that thumb. You've got this thumb three for doing whatever you want. Throwing thumbs up, using your seat post, using a lockout, whatever you like, really. Um, anyway, back onto this mech. The XX1 and X01 Eagle, um, they basically use sort of light, lighter materials. This is definitely a bit more of a lump than, uh, than that, just, just even just picking it up now. Um, again, this is sort of like stamped metal on XX1 Eagle, you actually get a carbon fibre bit. Um, yeah, but apart from that, it looks pretty much exactly the same. Again, as with all pretty much all modern mid to high end uh, derailers, you've got a clutch there which sort of resists the movement, stops the chain slapping about. Um, a nice thing about uh, SRAM's mech is that they have this catch here. That allows you to uh, lock it out in place so when you're taking your wheel out you don't have to fight the neck to get it out. It's good. Let that go. I'm trying to lose my fingers. Oh god, almost there. Um, yeah, and what it uses uh, is basically, you can see there, whereas older Max used to be kind of cantered at an angle like that and then it would swing in and out um, because these don't need to compensate for a pair of chain rings up front or even three chain rings. It's basically just flat, so as you shift up, the base, the chain getting shorter pulls that out of the way, uh, and it means that that jockey wheel there doesn't contact the cassette at any point. It doesn't mean that you need, or it does mean that you need to be very accurate with your setup, especially with the B tension screw. We'll get onto that in a moment. Uh, another thing around uh, the Eagle drive trains is that they use bigger jockey wheels. I think this is 15 teeth, uh, and it uses a narrow, wide profile, so. Some are fat, some are thin, and that sinks, much like this, 
sinks with the uh, with the holes in the chain, which stops it flapping about. Kind of makes it less noisy, um, better chain retention on the front, especially. It means you can run a single ring with that chain device. So you're probably familiar with all this. Um, yeah, a uh, place where they've saved a bit of money. Those things run on cartridge bearings. This has just got like a very basic bearing. Um, I imagine we'll see some big differences when I pop this on the scale just now. Um, according to my uh, notes, a X01 rear mech weighs uh, 215 grams. We have got 291 grams for this one. Um, it's not an awful lot different, you'd have thought, especially considering the cost differences. I mean, if I was regularly tearing rear mechs off, um, I'd probably be quite tempted to put one of these on uh, instead of an XX1 or X01 item instead. Um, but yeah, um, interesting enough, a lot of people say with the Eagle stuff that because that cassette or that cage is really long, uh, you know, oh, it must hit things a lot more. Well, to be brutally honest, I've not found that and I've been running XX1 and X01 for about a year now, I haven't torn a mech off. Obviously that means my next ride is now is now cursed, but there we go. Um, again, talking of setup, this is an interesting little tool um, that SRAM give you. Sorry, my dog's having a dream. Um, that, that SRAM give you, and basically you line it up with the cassette um, and then the chain, or you put it on the jockey wheel, or the upper jockey wheel, line it up with the cassette there, you might be able to see it, and that allows you to get the perfect B tension. Uh, which again is really important for the shifting of uh, all of these 12 speed drive chains and 11 speed as well, but especially 12 speed. Um, it's kind of like the, the heart of the entire thing, and yeah, it's the trigger shifter. You can buy a grip shifter, I have literally no idea why you'd want to do that, but there you go, some people are strange. I'm sure you can tell us why you love them in the comments and why I'm wrong. Um, but yeah, anyway, I love a I love nice trigger. Um, this uses their X-Sync mounting, so it'll match up nicely with their, you know, SRAM's own line of brakes. Um, I think other people like Hope can do clamps as well. Obviously it doesn't work with shoot on no brakes because they're sworn enemies. Um, interesting things about this, it's got basically plastic cover, plastic trigger, uh, metal, metal sh big shift lever there. Um, uh, whereas X01 is, uh, or XX1 is carbon there, composite there, um, yeah, and uh, X01 I think is still, yeah, that's alloy, but you can actually adjust the position via the clever little thing here. This is fixed in one position. Um, an interesting thing about this is that it's got, uh, it's got this anodising on it, which actually kind of like is pretty impressively rough, it actually gives you quite good grip on your thumb against it. Interesting little point. Anyway, enough waffle, time to weigh. Um, so, the shifter for an X01 Eagle is 125 grams. This, okay, on there. Well, that's, that's a bit of interest. This reckons 123 grams. So I want to say weight, I think it's because I can't get all this cable back on here. But yeah, that's interesting, they're about the same. Who knew? Turn up for the books, innit? Um, I suspect I must have got my weight wrong for the other one. Um, but I can follow up with that later. Anyway, we're almost at the, uh, the bit that's probably the most attention catching of all of the bits. So the rummage in of the XL1 Eagle room. Yes! It's the cassette which, if you haven't seen one before, looks absolutely bloody massive when it's on there. It's bigger than most brake rotors. Maybe if you're running like a 200mm brake rotor, it's about the same size, but 180mm rotor is smaller than that, which is quite odd when you remember that. Like, we didn't used to have, uh, we used to have like 28 tooth cassettes, which were about up to there, so about almost half the size of that. Absolute madness. Anyway, on the upper end Eagle group sets, this is basically made out of all of these first 11 cogs. They're machined from a single lump of chromoly steel. Obviously that's insanely expensive because it takes a lot of machining time, it wears down tool bits because it's a very hard thing to cut stuff out of. So GX Eagle was never going to have that. 
Instead, it's pinned together, so all of these cogs are individual yeah, steel cogs, and they're pinned together with these tiny little pins that you can see here. Again, that means that I reckon this is going to be significantly heavier. I think this would be the one biggest weight difference between the two group sets. At the back, again, you get uh, there's an alloy 50-tooth ring, uh, and here the smallest cog is 10 teeth. So that means that you get Eagle technology, 500% range out of it, which is broadly comparable to most of Shimano's double setups. Uh, although, again, if you're using one of their later model Lambda 46 tooth cassettes, it, that does start to approach it when you're double. In fact, I think it exceeds it a bit. But safe to say, this is a pretty decent amount of range. You can basically gear to the right gear you want using your front chain ring. So if you're some sort of mighty peddler, uh, then you kind of go up to like a 34 or a 36 here. Um, if you regularly ride up gigantic hills, then go down to like a 28. Um, yeah, that's all these to do. Um, other things about this, um, as you might notice here, it uses a different driver body. It uses SRAM's own XD driver body. So that means that not all wheels will be compatible to it. Um, you can get adapter kits for a lot of wheels, but if you're already on a cheaper set of wheels, you know, your mileage might vary. If they've got a standard Shimano free hub on there, you're, no, you're, yeah, you might not be lucky, so worth checking before you cough up for this. Anyway, the standard X01 10 to 50 tooth cassette, uh, my numbers say, is about 300. My handwriting's terrible. It's about 350 grams. 360, something like that. This, I'm guessing, is probably going to be quite a bit heavier than that. So here we go. Yeah, so X01 Eagle set, 350, this 450. So, yeah, I mean, there's 100 grams there, 100 grams there, a few grams there, no grams there. Um, so, yeah, you are, you are adding a bit more weight with this. Um, the only other thing you've really got to think about is sort of like how XX1 and XO1 Eagle will compare long term with this. So we're going to bolt this to a bike and find out. Um, I hope you'll join us for that later and I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, if you have then make sure you subscribe to our videos and give us a like because that's just nice of you. Anyway, from me, goodbye. <laughs>